right, it's uh, according to this digital clock, it's 4.24 p.m., December 21st, 1985. In my presence of the Sidney Schwartz from Hackensack, New Jersey. We're having a discussion here dealing with the actual birth of Jesus the Christ as to where um, it really happened in December or it happened in uh, the month of August at that particular time. I'm going to uh, attempt to go into trance here to see if we can get some information Well, a jolly good afternoon to you, Brother Sidney. Good afternoon to you. It is a pleasure that I might speak through the channel this afternoon. I didn't think that I would have the privilege to do this before Christmas Day. But uh, conditions have been just made perfect here. And since questions has been sent out into the ether waves, it is a joy that we might step in here with you and help guide you. Because any time that people like yourself have ideas dealing with the Bible, we always listen or cock our ears as you might understand it, and we listen to guide you, because there's been so many people that have been misled by all the different interpretations of the books, as you have already been uh, shown this as a fact. In fact, if you had not have researched yourself after coming into the presence of this medium, you would not be so well read with the Bible yourself, because at one time you thought you knew everything about it, and you have found out in the meantime that there's a lot of things that you haven't found out, and a lot of things that you would actually say has either been eliminated or deliberately covered up. And just a few moments ago, the way you measure time, you sent out a message into the ether waves. In fact, you asked this channel, and uh, it, a puzzled expression came over his face at the moment because you wanted to know where that word, Father, or what was meant when he was addressing or mentioning the Father. Let us go back and look at something in another way, which is not really complicated as far as you're concerned in your present time. You must remember that Father, when you break it down, would be a creative force or an energy. Just as the male becomes the creative part, the positive part. We're not saying that the female is a negative, but yet the energy is negative, And this must be. Because of the negative energy, this does not mean that the person is on the uh, evil side of life. Although you have experienced a great deal of uh, the female species as being very much on the negative side of life. And we are referring at the moment as the dark side of life, not the positive side as we are talking about it. Yes. The male species is the creative energy. You've got to remember that unless the male energy comes into force with the negative energy, nothing can be produced. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when the positive energy, the creative force, comes in and works through a channel, it becomes the father force or the creative force. So when you go back in time, would simply be non-existent. There would be no life at all on your earth plane. This could be something at the moment that you would find difficult to grasp. Because at the present time, many people on your planet are starting to realize energies that exist that at the moment you do not have any mechanical equipment to record the energies, and yet you know that they are there. Within your own lifetime, you will be very much aware of certain 
meters, as you call them, picking up vibrations or energies that has up to now never been recorded and yet felt and experienced by people who were sensitive to the world of spirit. When this comes into play within the very next few years of your life, it will prove to the people, and especially to the scientists and to the theologians, the same thing that what you know as Curlian photography has proven, that there is a something there that would be an energy field that surrounds all life, and especially the human species. When this is recorded, it will turn out to be a very controversial issue because of uh, the scientific community and the orthodox religions of your world. They will have a battle within themselves, and it will be at that time that millions of people on the earth plane will start thinking for themselves, start understanding it as it is explained on your educational networks, which will cover the whole globe at that time. In the meantime, there will be a great deal of experiences that you would know and understand in the present time that you would call psychic phenomena. This will be experienced through the eyes of television and through the mind and the eyes of instruments known as mediums. As all of this comes about, it will seem to drop into place certain links of the chain of knowledge that have been missing deliberately from your own books of knowledge for hundreds and hundreds of years. These links in that gold chain of knowledge were deliberately taken out and other thoughts or creeds were inserted in a way to try to satisfy the people for the moment. People such as yourself that have broadened your own mind and thought processes are coming in to a different light that would show the real working of spirit whereas it has always existed but yet somewhat invisible to their own senses because of the shading and the covering up of other theologians. You are coming to that period of time of understanding more of the meaning and the phrases used back in that book that you call the Bible. The man that you are now honoring at this time of year, you are absolutely right in what you have assumed. Uh, the man was not born on the 25th of December. It was what you would term the 10th day of August when the, the weather was quite warm in that part of the world. There has been so many changes pertaining to the real true story. So was he born in, in Bethlehem? He was born in Bethlehem. But members of his family lived in other places. If it, were they really going to get 
for the taxes because Jerusalem's not on, Bethlehem's not on the way to, to Jerusalem from Nazareth. His parents came from Nazareth. Their parents lived in the area of Bethlehem. They had gone on a two-purpose trip to visit with their parents. But when arriving, the parents had already gone to Jerusalem, and someone else had occupied their home at the time. This is not in the stories that you know. Before they were able to reach the home of the in-laws, the child or the labor pains started, and there was need to become bedded down because the town at the time was enjoying a festive occasion which again has not been recorded. You will notice that the town of Jerusalem is not that far from the town of Bethlehem. That's right. And their intention was to visit with them. However, the caravan that was to carry the message to their in-laws did not arrive in time to give them the message. So therefore the in-laws were not notified. And so this is why the mix-up and why they did not arrive at that particular time. What about the Magi? What can you tell me about them? Were they really astrologers? They were, as you would know it, mediums. But you must remember at that time that a medium would also use the stars and the other planets as points of concentration. They were known as astrologers, but not exactly as you would know astrologers to be today. You have astrologers on your planet today that are very much updated, far beyond anything that we had in those days. You must remember that you've heard of mediums using certain things as points of concentration, yes. be it a crystal ball, or be it a picture, or even a vessel of water. It is only a point of concentration. You might even ask the channel about an experience that he had in the time that he was away and on board a ship of focusing in on a very beautiful patch of stars that are not visible in the area of where you live in the northern hemisphere. Ask him about the patch of, of stars that he used as a point of concentration every night. This would have been the same as the Magi back at the time that you're concerned. It was simply a point of concentration. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Uh, I had a thought when you were, well, I don't know if it was you, but when the instrument was talking before about the sedan chair and that the medium was considered a king, immediately the Hallelujah Chorus went into, into my mind from the book of Revelations where it says, King of kings and Lord of lords, and he shall reign forever and ever. And to me it was just indicating that Jesus would have been the greatest medium. Is that really what that all that meant? The man Jesus, when he came to the world... As you have heard the instrument say to you many times that he was the grand finale, he was the greatest of all mediums endowed with all the gifts of the Spirit. Therefore, by being endowed with all the gifts of the Spirit, 
he reigned high and above all the other mediums or prophets known at that time. So he did become the king of all mediums and the prophetess. So the phrase king of kings, I understand. What about lord of lords? This is why I was asking about the father. Is that referring to the spirit control, lord of lords? Yes. You must remember that all prophets at that particular time, they all had what you know in the present time as spirit controls. This you understand. Yes. When he came to the world, he came with a higher evolved spirit control. Someone that knew all about the working of spirit and was taught when they lived and continued to be taught in the world of spirit and then waiting for approximately 1,370 years until the, the young uh, person was brought into the world and then was guided through all the teachings and the processes of continuing to learn. You must remember that at that particular time uh, there was a great school known to you as the Essenes. These people were far advanced beyond anything you can imagine, but they kept their teachings to themselves. They did not divulge the teachings to the rest of the world because the rest of the world was not ready for it. You will, in your own time, when it is revealed, that is, the truth, you will find out that what you know as the Dead Sea Scrolls was none other than the books of the teachings of the Essenes that was swiftly hidden away in the jars and carried into the mountains and hid in the dry caves because of the teachings that Jesus was using. These very same people, known as the Essenes, their whole world was crumbling around them because the greatest student that ever graduated from their school was none other than the man that you call Jesus. They became afraid that their books would be destroyed and all of them would be assassinated and they felt that the books had to be reserved in to a condition like and you would call a time machine where things are stored away. This is why these were taken and hidden in the caves. Is that in fact what happened to these scenes? Were they destroyed? They were destroyed by a band of priests that was trying to stamp out all that he stood for. They were able to do this for about 67 years after he died. You must remember that with his work and all of the followings that he gathered, they gathered together to worship him as a new god, moving aside and destroying all the images of other gods. At this particular time, approximately 60 years after he died, there were fewer and fewer people following the teachings of the known, the then known as high priest. It was then that one of the high priests had reached a point, as you would term, panic and hired 
a person that in your present time you would probably say that he was one who would go out and do the dirty work for others. This person to you was known as Saul. Mm -hmm. He was hired to go and arrest all of the people in Damascus that were now worshipping a new God. How long after Jesus' death did, did this happen? Approximately 70 years. You must remember that your calendar has been changed. Mm -hmm. But approximately 70 years, according to the way you measure time. And the Gospels, were they written yet? At that point when, when Saul was doing this? No, they were not written. They became about, about 300 years after. 300 years? So in other words... All the Gospels had nothing to do with any of the Apostles. This is true. It was all handed down by word of mouth. You must remember that approximately 300 years after, they were all compiled into many booklets, and approximately 25 to 30 Earth years after that, there was a great meeting in the city of Nasea, to determine actually what and how many of these little booklets, as you would know them, mm -hmm. would become the bigger book, combining them together to form what you know now as the Bible, or the Bible as it was called in those days. Mm -hmm. And so there was a great deal of actual fist fighting and chaos within the chamber because of what should be put into the book and what should not. Uh, I'm curious as to the Star of Bethlehem. Was that Haley's comment? The Star of Bethlehem was a comet, as you call it. I cannot tell you truthfully if it was, as you call it, Haley's comet, because the comet that you are referring to got its name from the man called Haley. Mm -hmm. But throughout millions of years, there has been comets that eventually come within sighting range of your own planet. We would have to do some research into the Akashic Records to bring that forward because through our knowledge there has been many comets touching back near the atmosphere of the planet Earth. If there's still energy, could you uh, talk again about the sedan chair and the Ark of the Covenant so that it could get on the tape for maybe other people to hear? The sedan chair that you are referring to was actually originally, as you call it, the cabinet. You must go back to the time that people looked up to a prophet as a godly man or a very holy man. There was none higher than the prophet. We are referring to a good prophet, a medium in your time, an honest medium that was a channel between the two worlds. This person was taken care of, such as a place to stay and food to eat. He was taken care of by his followers. He was looked up to as a king, as a very royal person, because he was the only link between their world and that of the world of spirit, or as known then as God. And therefore, it was after the birth of Jesus, when the priests were taking over, and they were determined to fake mediumship and all of the facets of it, that they scaled down what was at one time known as a cabinet, and they brought it down 
to look like a box, similar to what you might even call a coffin. Still again with the handles so that two men could carry it. But the church doesn't use that today anymore, do they? No, this is not used today in the churches. Down through the years it's been called uh, the Holy Covenant or the Covenant of God. So this had nothing to do with the Ark in Moses' time then? You're just saying that this all happened after Moses' time? This happened after Moses' time. But during the time of Moses, there was a tent that was used exactly as we were re have been referring to. The tent had a platform on the bottom and it was carried at the time by guild prophets or students that protect the medium. This medium was inside of the tent as it as it was called, but to you it is known as a cabinet. It was only large enough for two people to crowd into the space. This person was not allowed to walk on the soil, but carried to a certain spot, and it was lowered down. The person would go into a trance state, while the guild prophets would protect from anyone touching or moving or creating any imbalance in the energy. I'm confused. The, the, the medium would be sitting in a chair or he'd be inside a box? The medium would be sitting on what you term uh, perhaps a pillow, but usually it was skins of animals. So he'd be like a, 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 underneath a tent. It wouldn't necessarily be a box. He something. was underneath the tent. How accurate, when I was in Pennsylvania at that tabernacle that was supposed to have been out of the Bible, was that any accurate at all? It was similar too, but you must remember that a great deal of what you know in the present time is an artist's conception handed down through the ages. Just as in your present time you will see people that known as angels with wings this is only an artist's conception because we do not have wings as you would see them in the picture. Yes. About the scale of that cabinet in Pennsylvania, to me it was it was so gigantic and I couldn't understand how, if it really happened in the wilderness, how they could carry that around. Could you explain on that? The priest, in the beginning, when they started trying to fake mediumship, they built a larger cabinet or a larger edifice to get the people inside and then by guarding the doors and not letting them out until they placed or sacrificed something of value that they had on them by placing it in what they would call a tabernacle of God. They would always use the term that God, you must sacrifice something and give it to God first, and then by doing so, you would receive it back in tenfold. Now, what time frame are we talking about? We're going back to after the time of Moses, but then this died out, but then it came back after Jesus. Okay. It was during periods of time that the clans of priests ruled everything. In Solomon's time, in Solomon's temple? Yes. Okay. Could you explain why, if we go back to talk about Jesus and, and, the, and the Bible, why it is that there are so many contradictions about many things in Jesus' life, but yet the phenomena is recorded so, so accurately? Was, was Spirit inspiring this? The Spirit people that had given so much of their life and had gone on, they were working to make sure uh, that all of the workings and the meanings of the world of spirit, all of its symbolism, its teachings, uh, was passed on through word of mouth 
as if it was written in stone. It was meant this way because we knew that eventually the world would come to its senses and think for itself and not allow groupings such as you know religious groupings to be to be controlling the people's mind. Do you understand so far? Yes, I do. Please continue while the energy is up. May I ask a personal question? Yes, you may. I've noticed in several meetings that I've had very strange feelings with the, when I'm in the presence of a cabinet. Part of me is in awe and part of me gets very uptight and nervous. Could you explain why? You would have to go back in lifetimes, many lifetimes ago, when you were assigned to do a certain job that you were afraid to do. You would have to turn back the pages of time, and as you go backwards, you would find a chapter of your life that you were one of the priests involved in trying to rule the people. You were assigned to do a job to assassinate a powerful prophet that would have been in deep meditation with the inside of a kit tent or a cabinet as you know it to be. When you come into the presence of the cabinet with the medium in the cabinet and with your other group surrounding you, it brings to the surface in your mind of a past experience of which you could not back out. You, at the time, had the power that you were using in a negative way. You were not being guided by those from the higher side, but of the lower side. It is for that reason, and that ex those experiences that you've had, that you were brought in to the understanding of where you are today. We have worked through other channels to bring you in to the presence of this particular medium. You will go back over your own lifetime and pick up the threads of when you first met your friend that you would call Bonnie and how a deep friendship was created and cultivated. You will also stop and think of how it so happened that she came into the presence of this medium. Yes. And right on down the line to how you came interested and came to this very edifice. It was all planned by us on this side of life. Nothing is by chance. It was not a coincidence at all. I realize that. You have been and you are being guided very strongly. You are to help this channel as you work as a team to bring about a clear understanding of the working of spirit and all of the facets of it. There is no turning back. You must reach that time of writing a book which will be sold in more languages uh, than what you are familiar with at the moment. There are, at the very moment of your time, many things 
about to change or to take place, which will create a great interest in the working of spirit and the manifestation of spirit. As many people well known, perhaps famous in your own eyes, will come forward and stand on the stage of life and tell the people that I know for a fact that this has happened to me. And as they do this, it will be unlocking the door within their own mind that has been closed for such a long time. This will bring about a worldwide channel of knowledge that will help millions of people see the light that has been hidden under a bushel basket for nearly 2,000 years. We're going to release the medium and have him return to his own consciousness if you have nothing else to ask us. I would just like to say thank you for your guidance this afternoon. It has been a pleasure that we might be able to serve you. Go forward and let no one change your mind. I leave you in peace, peace be with you. and in infinite grace at this time of season. My peace to you. God bless you.